to another episode of the Presidential Executive Podcast. My boy, Rag over here is JB. Dude, what's good? Just something about that uh, the intro song, man. Like every time I listen, listen to it, man, it's just you get, you get motivated. I get, get motivated, man. That's just you get a little hype. It's coming soon, man. We're gonna have to re- re-record that and you know, kind of get something going, man. You and uh, you and Nova kind of put your put your sauce on there, man. You know, with, with Keenan. Give him a shout out, you know, man, on that. Kezo, <laughs> shout yeah. out to Kazo. Give him a little shout out, you know. He he did the song very. Man, that man is in parts unknown right now. I don't know. He may be in Alaska somewhere. Ain't no telling. He may be in Alaska somewhere. Man, but might be in what's that? Uh, you see that Will Ferrell commercial, the Super Bowl? I did. The man's in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Driving right? an electric car. I would not be surprised, but continue to like, subscribe, share. Um, all the videos and stuff we put out, man, uh, that would be very, uh, we would be very appreciative of that, and uh, we thank you for it. Uh, but, Rad, let's get straight into it, man. We got a, a new Super Bowl champion. We got Tampa Bay Bucks. Goat Brady is what I like to call him. Um, number seven, man. Um, I, I knew you like, I knew you like Skip Bayless. Yeah, I, I like Skip. I like Skip. Skip is, he could be a hater sometimes, but, you know. Well, you know who my guy is, except for when he's talking about LeBron. You know who my guy is. Uncle Shay Shay. Uncle Shay Shay. Ro Shay Shay. Uncle Shay Shay. Uncle Shay Shay. And that's we it. We say shout out to Club Shay Shay where we're going to do something before two something. <laughs> yeah. He got a li- nice little podcast, too. Nah, I, I love it. Yeah, I he got a nice little podcast. It's uh, So what you think about the game, man? What you uh, not, Now, you did say you thought it was rigged. I'll say this. Okay. Tom Brady still got to go out there and perform. Right. So I'm not going to take anything away from his performance. Mm-hmm. Three touchdowns. I will concede mm-hmm. that he is the best quarterback mm-hmm. to ever do it. Mm, okay. I'll give him that. You okay. know, I'm, a Tom, yep, and I'm yep. still a Tom okay. Brady hater. Okay. But I will concede. It's cold, dog. He got to go out there. He still got to complete the throws. He still got to put throw people open and put the ball in the right position. Yep. I will concede that what he has done over the course of 20-something years – it's nothing short of phenomenal. With that being said, he get an awful lot of help. Uh, you talking about defense? Are you talking no, about, you talking about like the, the referees? Are you talking about the stripes? You, okay. you can't you can't beat you can't beat the Tampa Bay and the refs. Hey, I, I'm on a totally different just, side of that. My thing is this, and don't get me wrong. I don't think I'm not a Kansas City fan. They beat my squad last year, so like yeah. I'm not sad to see them lose mm. at all. However. I just feel like watching the game, mm-hmm. you know, it's like every time Kansas City made a good play, and, and it got to the point to where, like, we were making a joke about it. Every time it was like a tackle or an interception, it was like, watch this flag come out. And then, and then the flag was late. Yeah, so It's like they're levels. placing the ball, and then you see flag pop up at the bottom of the screen, and we just bust out laughing every time. Like, it got to the point to where it was just so tragic. Like, the last time I saw an ass whooping like that was when I disrespected my dad as a kid. <laughs> I ain't seen it's one been like that, that long? in years. It's been that long. Ooh. I hadn't seen one wow. like that in years. And uh, it, it got to the point, like, it was like the start of the fourth quarter. Like, all right, I'm out. I'm going to holler at y'all. Because like, it was no point. Yeah. It was no point in watching it. Because it, I knew, like, you're not coming back down 31-9. I knew it was over at halftime. It could because the same thing happened when uh, Tampa Bay played the Packers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? When they had that last touchdown to end the half, mm-hmm. I'm like, it's a wrap. Because you're not – even if you make a comeback, that seven points going to be a whole different – a difference yeah. maker. So when they went up 21-6, you know, at halftime, I was like, and, that's going to be tough. And, and it's like – but, but okay, just like when Brady ran up to Matthew and yeah. they called him sportsmanlike conduct. But Matthew went up to him first. No, he said something, and yeah. they, they, so again, they didn't call unsportsman like for him saying something. Uh-huh. They called unsportsman, and then Brady went up and headbutted him with the helmet. I don't know if it's a headbutt. No, when you lean in and he do that, in, I'm just saying you, he hit he him with the headbutt. But what I'm saying is this: if I point at you and say something, and you come back and headbutt, like it should be like when the penalty's offset, uh-huh. it should be nothing. It's no reason. It's no discussion. It's like. The referees come and say, hey, y'all need to cut that out. This is the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, they were just throwing penalties on top of penalties and, like, 
You didn't think they were holding? They were holding. Okay, but they so were worse was holding every time for Tampa Bay. Who? The the uh the the the, the I, I uh he played tackle or guard or something. They they first round pick that they drafted okay. Tristan Worse. Okay. Every time, like in the end, so they're talking about like when they would show Brady in slow motion throwing it. Oh, he can please pay. You see Worse having the dude around the neck, horse calling him. Like and, and, and what couple, I'm saying but... is holding happens all the time. It does. So unless the hold is preventing a play, like if you're throwing the ball on that side of the field, pass interference should never be called on that side of the field if I'm throwing it that way. If I'm not even trying to throw that direction, yeah. what's happening on the other side of the field, unless it's injuring a player or something like that, should not be called. Nah. Even it was some passes like if the pass could not like when they called the uh pass interference when when they tripped. Yeah. And when you looked at the replay, it wasn't now, like that was, he that tried was a late that flag. was incidental. That was a late flag. Yeah. Okay. They they were running side when you're running side by side, that can happen. Yeah. And, and you know, like running track or playing basketball or whatever, you know, if you running next to somebody and y'all running your feet connect, you can trip up a little bit. That right. happens. It's not a flag. Right. Because – because both of them fell. So you could just as easily say it was offensive pass uh, interference as it was defensive. It should have been nothing. Mm-hmm. It, but it's stuff like that that now you're in a better position to score. Mm-hmm. And that stuff swings the momentum. So it's like every time the defense was getting a little momentum, you get on third down, every every third down, flag. Right. Now you got another four. Yeah. And so, again – it's hard when all of your offensive line starters are out. Not making excuses for Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes laid an egg. He's human. It happened. We thought he was not human. Yeah. We see he's just like the rest of us, unfortunately. Now, this is what I would have to say. I think that the penalties, like the way that they were holding pretty good and the way just you can see their habits. The habits, they've been holding pretty much all year because they couldn't stop it. You know what I'm saying? Because certain number 21, whoever his name is, and uh, 30, not 30, not not Matthew, but another 30. I forgot what his name is. But the way they were holding, like, I won't say every penalty was valid, but I would say definitely over 70% of them were like that. So I just think that, but their defense, Tampa's defense stepped up. They didn't even blitz, blitz that much for the game. They had their front four pretty much yeah. domin- dominate the whole game. Right. So, no, I mean, I'm not like I said. I'm not taking nothing away from that. Yeah, I'm just saying, like the one they called the pass interference where the guy tripped. Mm-hmm. That was a momentum killer. Mm-hmm. It was another one when Matthew got the interception. They called pass interference on the other side of the field. You no, it was on I'm the saying? same side. It was no, it, was it wasn't. It was, it was on the other side. side. I it got, was on I the other side. I got to do a replay, but I think it, it, it was, was on the other side because he was right there, and I think it was uh, it was right on. But to, it wasn't to his right. the guy. He, like he, it's not like he was going to that receiver, and you stopped a the receiver who's about to catch the ball from catching the ball. And, and again, the flag didn't come out until he got the interception. Right, and it's running in. It's like up, oh. and and then you saw Brady. Brady looked at the ref, like, and and it, it's so much so to the point that like every time. Even when no penalty was called, every time a play was down, uh-huh. the Tampa Bay players were looking at the referees like, what y'all going to do? Like, you going to call something? Yeah. And so for me, as a fan who likes to see good football, it kind of takes away from it because it's more lawyer ball than, man, let's just go out here and play. Yeah. Oh, you know y'all was holding this. That's all right. We got y'all next down, though. Like, just like we play in the street. Like, you know, we play in the gym, open gym. Like, oh, you, hey, you know you found me, right? We ain't finna sit up there and argue 20 minutes over a call. It's like, uh-huh. oh, man, shoot forward and be done with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's go. Um, and so when you're constantly stopping the game, flag, 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 it kind of takes away from it. And even if it's not rigged, it makes it feel like it because when they show the penalty discrepancy, okay, we're all professionals. We're all doing the same thing. Uh-huh. And so if you're going to call it, call it both ways. Uh-huh. And, and I and I can see – Kansas City having 10, Tampa Bay having 6 or 5. Kansas City had 10, Tampa Bay got 1. But that's impossible. KC was overplaying their hand, though. They was overplaying their hand. Like, with some of them penalties, like, dude was – they were literally, like, grabbing them. And they, they actually did that against uh, – who, who they played before the Super Bowl? 
who KC played? Who's uh? They no. played uh, uh Buffalo. Yeah, they played Buffalo. They were doing the same thing to Diggs, but they just weren't calling it. And so to me, it just kind of it just kind of came back to them because they were doing the same thing to to Beasley, John Brown, and Diggs, the champion, the conference championship game. And so to me, it kind of just caught up to them. Plus, like I said, their defense was just smashing, and um, were Gronk. You know what I'm saying? Just that's their whole scheme. Like they they had no answer for Gronk. They couldn't they couldn't do a screen pass. You know what I'm saying? Defense to save their life. You know, Fournette looked like LSU Fournette. You know what I'm saying? When he ran in for that 30 yard touchdown or whatever it was. So, you know what I'm saying? Like salute to to Tom salute. Brady, man. Like I said, I'm I can say I can, I can say, see he's the greatest quarterback that ever did. I'm I'm a fan. I say man. it begrudgingly. I'm a fan. Like he's. Just the fact that he went to another, a whole nother team, pretty much. I don't care how much talent you have, you still got to learn the schemes. You still got to have chemistry. You know what I'm saying? So, this it may be the greatest feat by a quarterback. Just the way how he did it, man. Like how you go to another team. You remember that Jesus song? My president is black. Yep. Well, Tom Brady's ain't. That's all I got to say. (laughs) Ah. I'll leave it at that. Hey, hey, shout out to shout out to Tom Brady, man. Seven that man been trying to make America great again. You know what he is. <laughs> seven time I'm goat. Seven surprised. time goat. Now, did you catch the halftime show? Did you did worst you... halftime show ever? Yeah, like let me just see how I feel about that. Like, I didn't think it was great, but I thought, you know, because he got some hits now. You know, Weekend got some hits. So he was he can't dance. Let's just put it out there. He can't dance. We I I knew that before going in though, so I don't think it was just the worst worst, but it, it was bad though. So I think the weekend, you know, I saw a little meme that had him, him um, a split screen, him looking like uh, Tyler Perry and Alex Cross. He does he, favorite Tyler. Perry. He does, he does. So he he looked just like that, but it was bad, man. But I I would give all money and good money. True. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Yeah, but they – I don't think he did – it was bad, but I I don't think it was just like like Carl Lewis singing the national anthem bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's levels to it. You know what I mean? Like now, who was worse than him? You remember uh dude used to play for Boston. They played for uh, Kentucky. Yep. Uh, I know Bob what you're talking McCarty. about. And when he was singing, <laughs> he sang – He tried to sound like Marvin Gaye on that job. The only one who actually sounded good was Victor Oladipo. Like, he could actually sing. Yeah, he can't sing. Like I was tripping, I'm like, oh wow, he can't he can sing. Really sing. He can't sing, but, but no. Uh, the weekend, like, who no. was worse? It fucked halftime Super show. Bowl. Uh, I can't because Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson wasn't bad. Like, no, nah, they weren't bad. And, and and I was mad that America got mad off of that little bitty titty that popped out. Like it's titties they could have been mad at. Like Janice was not one of them. Like if it, we was in the culture, I'm like now, I don't think. I don't think the titty would have been bad, but just like what was that like? Oh, okay. Because think about 05, this: 06, Janet's titty 04. popped out, and it shut America down. Like think if Lizzo titty had popped out. <laughs> yeah, that would have been like uh, people that... would have been fainting. Like TVs would have blown up. <laughs> not like, I'm Lizzo, just saying. Not Lizzo. I'm just saying. Yeah, that was. I can't think of a worse one. Like um, Gaga did it, but Gaga wasn't bad though. I don't think she was. She wasn't that. She wasn't as bad as the weekend, but the weekend got hits. Like, just as far as pure music, it was good. But the uh, the the part of the the halftime show where he was in there and it was like a uh, uh, selfie facial going through. That was kind of weird. I kind kind of felt uncomfortable looking at it. You Not know what the part I'm where he was in like <laughs> but, the little panic room with yeah 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 all yeah. the dudes that had the mad like the facial thing that the he had mask. on or whatever. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, that was. That was weird. That was that was different. So I, I kind of felt uncomfortable looking at it. And Rachel too was watching it. She was like, uh, "I feel kind of awkward looking at this." You know what I'm saying? But just because it was, it did was. Did Jasmine Sullivan come out? She sung the national anthem. Oh, that was all she did. Yeah, well, I, I didn't get like that. the weekend was so bad. Like we stopped watching. Like how put on. We was listening to all like Memphis '90s, 2000s trap music. Oh, word? Like, oh, yeah. No, nah, like, man, we hit the mute. Just to offset man, that. Man, we had got it going, 360 going. Man, we was in, we were turned. 
Something I was thinking about, this kind of re- well off subject with that. What happened? Whatever happened to T Rock, man? You remember T Rock? They used to rap with uh three six. Yeah, but well, from ATL. I, uh, I mean, I don't know. He's still alive, like I. Know yeah, him. no, he's still around. Okay. I mean, he just okay. did. As far as I know, uh, they weren't doing music together anymore. But no, he's still putting out projects. And stuff. Okay, okay. Obviously, with you know the three six doing that era, everybody had to follow that with them because of how they was handling their business. But well. You know, but yeah, I was just, I just wondered because I was uh, listening to uh, you know, YouTube music and uh, one of them uh, old T Rock songs came on, uh, Slang and Serve. Mm-hmm. You know, the AT, yeah, yeah, yeah. AT, well, you know, I mean, that one. see, this is the thing though. A lot of people, what I've learned is a lot of people don't understand contracts. Oh, yeah, most so, people don't. Based upon the contract, yeah, you could say. Because that's why, like, a lot of people end up coming back around and they end up because they understand now they got to okay. Yeah. Well, this is what I signed for. Yeah. And so if something pop or blow up, you're looking at like, oh, we cool or we boys or we fam. Mm-hmm. No, paperwork say. Right. You get this, I get that. You don't like that, let's renegotiate. Let's but come they back always to the table. paint they always paint the owners at the back, like Diddy as the bad guy. Right. When, when he did the thing with the locks. I mean, but even the locks now come back and say that you know that, what I'm that saying? Was right. The he didn't said. do anything wrong right. per the contract. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I've listened to some interviews where, like, um, some dudes that was around was talking about, like, how Biggie contract was jacked up. You know? Yeah, but Biggie had so many shows. Yeah. That he was doing, he, he so was, he was he getting... Was, but, I mean... He was getting a lot of money um, from that. But, but, you know, like, a lot of times artists will sign for stuff and they don't understand the way the contract worked. Yeah. And so, you're doing all these events, all these shows, you're selling all these, you know, well, now it's more streaming. Um, but at the time, yeah, it was different more thing. album sales or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, we making all this money, but right. you know what I'm saying? And then you also got to factor in, it's like, you know, the record label going to get theirs first. Yep, off top. Yep. And so, like, a lot of artists don't understand, like, The okay, recoup thing. You shoot a video, yep. whatever money they spend on their video, yep. they got to get that back. You you want, uh, you want Timberland and Dre and... Uh, Zaythoven and uh, man, mm-hmm. any like uh, any five producer you can think of, you want them. That's coming out of your budget, right? You know what I'm saying. Um, we need to do an episode. You, you want to pull up that soon, like just yeah, your you, you experiences, and, and you want to yeah. ride up in the you know in the limo or or, mm-hmm. or uh, the the new vet or or. You know, the, the Cadillac truck or whatever, mm-hmm. it's coming out of your budget. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you want to eat at these restaurants? You want to stay at this hotel? That's coming out of your budget. So now you start making all this money. Right. And they're like, okay, we got, got to deduct for that video. Got to deduct for that limo. Got to deduct for all that room service. Got to deduct for all your wardrobe, mm-hmm. all these producers you bought. And so you might have sold $5 million, Yeah. But your overhead, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, is four. Right. And then you still got to pay um, mm-hmm. your lawyer or your agent. Right. So you may probably. You know what I'm saying? And then you still got to pay negative. taxes. Yeah. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So now you done made five million, but you only getting one before taxes. And before you done paid your agent slash lawyer. Right. And anything. So now you only got like 300000 out of that. And you like, but I sold five million. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's, and, it's, and, and, it's a and game. Then that, and then you just spent game. you in the hole because you didn't buy a house that mm-hmm. cost a million. You know what I'm saying? For you yeah. probably bought two or three cars that's totaling you into a couple million. Yeah. So now you in the hole. You you got three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand dollars, but you you already, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Two million dollars in the hole. Right. So so that was yeah. So we we can actually talk about that. Actually, I want to hear about that. Maybe another podcast, just your experiences with that. Maybe we can delve in deep. Maybe that'd be season two or something. Maybe we can Yeah, you know, man. Delve delve into that and really, you know, open some eyes with that. But but back to this, like I never I didn't never I didn't see Jasmine Sullivan because I had a situation at the wing guru. We tried to get some wings and the the gent up here in Bartlett and it was a whole situation. Like the, the folks about to get to fighting up there. Because people ordered their wings earlier this week and they weren't ready by the time they came around four or five o'clock like i ordered like real late i ordered like four o'clock you know what i'm saying they told me to come up there in an hour and so i was like you told me an hour but that that was that was so backlogged 
So, you know, it was a whole mess up there. This white dude about to come over the counter, fight the other, you know, fight the owner and doing all this stuff. So it was it was interesting. But Win Guru, I, I, I still love nah, him. they got amazing win. You should have went to the one. In Millington? Yeah. Nah, nah, that's too far for me. Too, too far for Man, me. Man, okay, number too one, far. they still would have been straight. Number two, no lines, no waiting. That's true, but I, I, I and so the time, all that time you spent up there fighting, you could have had your wings and been back to the house. The thing was, I already paid for it though, because you know once you call on the phone, you pay for it, then it like no refund. That's why the dude was mad, because a lot of people was like, "Cool, if you can't have my wing, just give my refund." They were like, "No refunds." <laughs> so every, you know, so they just they up there, fire hot. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, my wings came probably around six forty five or so. So. You know, it was all good. So, but uh, but that's the reason I didn't see the, the Jasmine Sullivan. I heard she did good. Everybody else was talking about she was the best uh, of everything. Her and her, the artist, her, mm-hmm. she performed. I like her too. Her is dope. She she mm-hmm. real. She see a lot dope. of these a lot of these wing places mess up. It's a secret. I know. I'm gonna tell you off camera. I don't want to be giving this away for free. Okay. Okay. But but this is this is actually how you can avoid being backlogged. Mm-hmm. But a lot of places don't know that. So. We'll have that conversation off camera. Yeah, yeah, we we, we need to do that. But see, I don't I don't be making wings like that, so like I know what to do, but like that ain't my yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, you, I need, just, you need some gumbo. I got you. They just like, dropped the ball because yeah, I had to like, do it because you know we we no, nah, but we they, like man, their wings are yeah, their wings are amazing. Yeah, yeah like they they sleep, really are. Like I want to say, I would say top two, top three in they, Memphis. They number one to me. Cause they, I mean, and, that, and that's what I mean. Like, yeah. I haven't had everybody. That's why I said it. But, right. like, without thinking about it, I know they're at the top of the list. Better than, like, better than Chings? I know. I'll put you on the spot with that. I, I, lo- I love Chings, man. <laughs> I do. I love Chings, too. I love Chings. I like I Chings, Chings, too, man. But... I love Chings, and I got the plug, so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, I love, and, and they've never disappointed me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like when I had my, my they got team, the slaw dogs. I'm a slaw dog fan yeah. up there with the orange mound Kool Aid, orange yeah. mound punch. Nah, and when when I when I was co- coaching, like when I, we would do our awards program and stuff like that, like you know, he, he ain't got the plug. Right, man, hooked us up, man, with with, with the wings, extra fries, orange mm. mound punch, man, the slaw dog, like man, with did it big. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, uh, so so I mess with him. Yeah, so, so that's it. You know, we we actually we we know some people at Ching. So yeah, but so that's that's you know that that's fam over there. But mm-hmm. at the Wing Guru, it's it's tough to beat them. Tough to beat them. Um, shout I'll, out to Billy Richman. Shout out to Billy, man. Shout out to Billy. Um, I thought he was gonna come up there because it got so heated. They was like, I'm, they wanted to see the owner. But oh, it was, yeah, yeah. It was uh, some other dude that came out. I think he played ball too. I can't even think of his name. But um, you know that that happened with that. But. You uh you heard of the rapper Little Uzi, right? I think I said it right. Little Uzi. Maybe y'all. I, I sound, already know I sound, where you're going. I sound, I sound like an OG. Little Uzi. Little you Uzi. I already know what you're talking Little about. Little Uzi got a 24K diamond embedded into his forehead. Like, I, I don't even know how you do All that, All I know bro. is this nigga going to run up into somebody in the hood that's going to be like Thanos. <laughs> and they're going to vision gonna, him. Take that and they're going to snatch it out of his forehead. Oh, like, and I, I don't... And he from Philly though. I'm thinking. I'm thinking he's I like. I don't know where Lil Uzi is from. I promise. I look. I think he's from Philly because I'm like. I'm. But, uh, I just assumed he was like a South rapper or something. But I, I think a lot of these rappers bring stuff on crazy, themselves man. now. Um, it's not just what they're talking about. Yeah. You know, I've always been one that believes. You know, death and life is in the power of your tongue. Right. You manifest stuff when you constantly. Yeah. Speak death and and murder and getting shot and or o- overdosing or whatever. You constantly saying that stuff. Yeah. Eventually, that stuff will will start manifesting to you. Yeah. You you're giving it light. You're creating life. Yeah. Um, for that stuff, but then also, I, I live my life off like like and this, this a whole we we need to do an episode on this, but like I govern my life off of uh, the Ten Crack Commandments. You ever heard that song by Biggie? <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. you could take what he said about that and apply that in relationships. Uh-huh. You could apply it in business. True. You know what I'm saying? Like, but what's rule number one? You never let nobody know how much dough you hold. Right. And he said, because the cheddar breeds jealousy, especially if that man effed up, he leave your ass stuck up. Right. Ba- and basically, that's what it is. What's the guy, uh, XXX? Trip T- T- uh, Extension. Yeah. He had all that money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's my boy name? Uh, Pop Smoke. 
Yep. You doing the video, you're showing people how much money you have, and it was a robbery gone wrong. Right. But you're never supposed to let anybody know what you're holding. Right. Number two, you never let them know your next move. Like I said, we'll have to do that episode, but like a lot of these rappers are getting into situations because right. if you follow those rules, yep. and he told you at the end of the song, if you follow these rules, you have mad bread to break up. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you'll be straight if you follow these rules, but a lot of them, you don't have anybody teaching you the code. Yeah. Are they just so into trying to flex that they don't really even care about it? Uh, but, you know, Little Uzi. Um, and, and social media is mm. a whole nother monster, too, because everybody's trying to show out. Yeah. We're trying to live vicariously through other people, and we're trying to um, be seen. Mm -hmm. and, and you want the attention. Into, but the thing about attention is, is you can't control who you get attention from. Yeah. And so it's just like chicks when they go to the club. Mm -hmm. You dress a certain way because you want to be seen by a certain guy. Right. But you get mad when you got other guys looking at you that you ne don't necessarily want looking at you. Right. Don't want that attention from. And most of the time, it's the guys you don't want looking at you that's giving you all the attention. Right. The nigga, you want to look at you, ain't studying you. Right. Yeah. And, and you're mad, but you dress that way to get the attention. Right. Or we dress a certain We carry ourselves a certain way because we know we finna go. To a certain neighborhood or something, so we want to look a certain way. Yeah. But then if we get pulled over by the police or something, then we like, oh, what? A, I ain't doing nothing. Right. But yeah, you you dress that way or you move that way for a reason, mm -hmm. but you can't control who see how you moving. Right. And so you got to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them don't. And so I can't tell nobody not to put no diamond in their head. Nah. It's just, you know just like, like when uh, the only diamond I know about is a diamond in the back with the gangster link. That's the only diamond I know about. I so know. Uh, that's when uh, you know when Mike Tyson got the gel on his face, or when Gucci Man got the ice cream on his, you know, on his forehead or side of his face or whatever. It just seems like, you know, rappers now they just they trying to outdo, you know. Okay, so and so got a tattoo on his face, a baby. You know, when he had that big gel on his forehead, got the big right. old you know stuff on his bald head. It's like, okay, what can I do to? To stunt more and do something like that, I'm like, okay. So I guess the next level is to embed something into your phone. Man, man I don't, I don't care how bad and tough you think you are. Don't nobody need to be trying to compare themselves to Mike, cause I ain't, <laughs> I ain't seen nobody sit up with Mike. Have you watched uh, Mike's podcast? The no. Hot Box Man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I seen, only I seen, seen I seen a couple, a couple episodes. people okay. on that jump, like. Yeah. And, and some of these like some real dudes on there, but like they sitting there with Mike, and it's just like they break down. You ain't yep. Like now, Bootsy didn't fold, but like he wasn't going back and forth with Mike either, though. But Bootsy, you, know you can tell but, he had that Bootsy respect for him. Dude. He had that respect uh, for him. He wasn't saying anything. The guy that uh, is a guy that was nothing. in the mob, uh, Michael Francis. Uh, he used to be a a, a mob member. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He went to jail. And he got out and everything. He actually is like a minister now. Okay. Um. But now he didn't bag that, but like this is a real, yeah. you know what I'm saying, mob guy. Like this guy knew John Gotti for real. Yeah. You know, knew Columbo for real. Knew Vincent the Chin uh, Gigante for real. Yeah. Like you see these characters in like the uh, Godfather Harlem or whatever. He knew these people for real. Yeah. Like in the movie Goodfellas, they actually mentioned his name when he walked into the Copacabana. Okay. And he was naming all the people that he saw. Yeah. And he's like, oh, Pete the Killer and this person, that person. And then uh, Mikey Francis, that's what he was talking about. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this was a real, but he didn't back down from Mike. Yeah. But, like, this is a guy, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm from the streets too. Like, yeah, I, I live it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, man, if you folks try to compare themselves, don't compare yourself to Mike Tyson. No. That, that'll be a mistake. That'll be a mistake. And also, before we kind of get into our topic, I want to give a shout out to Penny and the Tigers. You know what I'm saying? Salute. Oh, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Penny and like the Tigers. Like I said, man, I told y'all, man, y'all got to back up off my boy, man. One I told last, you it was going to be all right. the last six out of the last seven games. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, on, on the upward trend right now. Um, oh, shout out to our, our fellow podcasters, man. Shout out to my boy, Mo, Mo Kicks and Bruce Lee. Mo Kicks. Doing his thing. Guy, you know, we sure. saw you on the joint. Uh, yeah, man. With the uh the one I, I forget the guy's name so I don't want to miss say it but the one cent uh the sneaker guy yep, 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 but yep. but I saw I watched the episode and y'all yeah. was talking about 
Uh, like I didn't know that dude had so much love for Memphis. So man, shout out to Mo Kick. Shout out to uh, Crown Nine Hundred One. For sure, man. Always doing your thing. For sure. Uh, man. any any local businesses and, and people you want to shout out? Um, not. I think I talked about just. You know the people that we know. We know uh, Latrell and Rock. They know. spoke Rock He's, got our sizes, man. Where I my know. shirt said, Rock. Yeah, I ain't gonna. I ain't. I wasn't gonna speak on it. But now since he spoke on yeah, it, yeah, I'm where like, them shirts man, at, bro? Where the shirts at, Rock? Where them shirts man, and pants we at, bro? We pay for the shirts and we gotta pay for them, man. Let's, Mess with your boy. Let's go. And so, oh. and uh, you know, Ease just closed down. Yeah, too. man. Yeah, but Ease. they, hey, but they got some old stuff working. Man. Yeah, they get so some. So, so shout out to Latrell and Rock, uh, for sure, doing some stuff man. on the, on the local tip. My boy Fat Boy made it. With them good hot plates. Yeah, I saw, I saw Rated our clothing. Yeah. No comment clothing. Yeah. My boy, Crime Time, Prime Time Barbecue. Hey, I got to get you some of them ribs. Boy. Man, when I tell you. Put them in the mail. When I tell you. Uh-huh. The special. Yeah. Three slabs for the. Hey, when I tell you. <laughs> Is that three fat slabs? Three for the slabs. 50? Three for slabs. For three full slabs for the 50. Oh. I stay getting them joints. Okay. Every holiday, I stay getting them joints. And he was like, he said, he said, Roto. He said, I be seeing your podcast, man. You don't mess with your boy. Hey, because I was over there uh, yesterday. I had to yeah. get some wings from him. Wings was on point. Where he at? Man, uh, he stayed. He, he he Memphis. He local. Uh, like east, out east, where he stayed. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying, but like you put the order in. Okay. And he don't care. He's like, man, it could be straight cash, cash up. It don't matter. He said it all spin the same way. He said, you straighten him out, he going to get you straightened out. You said nothing but a word. Let's do that. Oh, yeah, a, man. You know, whenever you feel uh, like bringing charity, man, let's put that put that gun in my mailbox. You know. No, no, I got you. Put that gun in the mailbox. No, so, I, I, yeah, I got you. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, that's that. Uh, I want to start getting into our topic today, and we want to deal with the uh, black people in therapy. You know, um, I think that's an interesting subject. I think in today's culture, I think black people are more open to therapy more than ever you know what i'm saying just because the mental health uh wave is uh popular and stuff now so uh, and i think you have an interesting perspective on therapy period you know what i'm saying so i want to hear you first as far as what you what you think about that or okay. that whole thing so i'm not i'm not anti-therapy Okay. You know, um, actually, one of the things, actually, before I went and changed my major to English, uh, I was also uh, a psychology major. Okay. And, and I ended up changing because that was a whole nother story for another day. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't because I couldn't do the work and it wasn't because I couldn't handle what was going on. Right. Um, my Aunt Zane, rest in peace, uh, had her PhD. Um, but but she was a therapist, um, psychology major. Her husband also same thing, and uh, I mean, genius dude. I mean, he's an African like mm-hmm. genius. But he was actually trained by Sigmund Freud's daughter. Okay, mm-hmm. so and Sigmund Freud is the father of modern psychology. For anybody who doesn't know, right. so he was trained by the daughter of the guy who came up with, mm-hmm. you know, everything. So anytime I had a question, like I got the plug. Right. You're not telling me any. You're not teaching me anything. Like I got the cheat sheet. Right. Okay. But my issue was because I go all the way to the root. Okay. So Freud came up with all of his psychoanalysis, um, using Shakespeare, mm-hmm. saying that everybody had an Oedipus complex, which basically means that it basically says that all children want to have sex with their parents. So if you had an Oedipus complex, that would be saying like you'd be fantasizing about your mom. Wow. Or if you're a, a girl, you're fantasizing about your dad. Mm-hmm. I've never fantasized about my mom. Yeah. So that's uh, be it. But but that was one of his philosophies. Mm-hmm. And he also was a cocaine addict. <laughs> so right. you're developing all of this stuff while you're high, reading Shakespeare, believing that everybody has an Oedipus complex. Wow. Okay. So I kind of pause, you know, on that. Um, but even beyond that, like, and and I've had family members that go have gone to therapy mm. and ha- have lost some to suicide and, and they were going to therapy. Mm. Problem was, what's the solution? What's the end game? 
Because right. it's a lot of tell me how you feel. Talk about your feelings. But sometimes people need to, okay, what do I need to do? Right. I'm hurting. How can I stop hurting? Right. Practical ways yeah. to kind of go about and, it. And you just, okay, well, how are you feeling? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm, I just told you I'm hurt. <laughs> right. <laughs> what do I need to do? Yeah. You know, um, and just as an experiment, one time, like, I was going to a therapist for about three or four months, and I was counseling the therapist <laughs> because you're not finna run the game on me. Yeah. Like, first of all, I'm straight. I'm good. Yeah. Like, if you just want to talk, I, we'll talk. But right. you're not finna run game on me. So, if you want to – I'm paying you anyway, so you finna earn this money. Right. <laughs> and, and so, now, I'm just, I'm just saying stuff just to see if you know I'm really – jerking you around or not and you're giving me all this and that i don't really feel that i just wanted to see what you was gonna say yeah so you're full of it yeah and and so my thing is i just feel like and 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 i had a long conversation and it was funny when you sent sent me the the message about the topic i I didn't respond because i actually was tripping off of it because i had just had this conversation yesterday oh wow it's like oh shoot i gotta respond to the text oh um but what I was saying is, is that like if me and you, we have a relationship and we actually, we talked about this on another episode. We had an issue, mm-hmm. but we talked about it right? like men or like family or like people. Yeah. We discussed it. We didn't need a mediator. Right. It would be disingenuous of me if I got an issue with you to go to somebody else. We got a relationship. Yeah. And I didn't at least try to present the option for us to. Talk about it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not anti the therapy or the counseling. Mm-hmm. But what I feel like is is that only it should be just like when you get ready to go to court. You go to court as a last resort. Yeah. Like we didn't try to hash that. We can't figure it out. Okay, let's get somebody to bring it in Yeah. to do that. Yeah. But in yeah. terms of if you got family stuff, if, but if you've seen your family every day, you should try to have a conversation with your family. Right. Now, if it gets to where y'all can't talk about it, okay, fine. Yeah. Go to a therapist. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're if you're dating somebody, married to somebody, y'all should try to talk about it first. Right. And, and like you got, how would you feel if your and your baby boy ain't they, they ain't nowhere near driving? But how would you feel if they came and said, uh, "Hey, pops, you got to teach me how to drive." Uh, my basketball coach had me. You good. <laughs> right. You feel some type of what? Because right, you're like, right, I'm right. here every day. Right, yeah. How would you feel if your daughter said, you ain't got to have to talk with me, Dad? Uh, so and so. My, my teacher talked to me about it. I'm straight. I know what I need to know. Right. And you're like, I'm here. Like, that person needs to stay in their lane. So, or whatever, you know. if you got a f- yeah. issues within your family or your relationship, and they're like, oh, well, you know, I was talking to this person. They told me I need, and you didn't even know it was a problem. Yeah. Now, what, what I would say I'm, I've been leaning toward more therapy, I guess, in this past year, just because I've been to to some. So I see, I know the benefit of it. You know what I'm saying? Cause as far as a therapist, they, at least the one I went to, you know, they try to get to the root of something. You know what I'm saying? They try to get, now you, ha- you do have therapy where they try to jerk and jive you and stuff like that. But the one, uh, I went to, they went to the root of it. Like, are, you know, you feeling this way? Let's see, why do you feel this way? Let's go back to how you grew up, your family. You know what I'm saying? How did you deal with this? You know, that, like, I think that can be beneficial. You know what I'm saying? Because now you can see, you can maybe trace back how you're feeling to the root of something you went through in your childhood or something, how you react you know, as you was an adolescent or an adult. So I can see it, it being beneficial, but I also see it can be counterproductive if you don't have the spiritual side up to up to par and then just go to the therapy. Hey, did you ever watch The Sopranos? Yeah, I watched some of it. Okay, so it. remember he was seeing a therapist, right? Yeah. But he was only going. Mm-hmm. Just because he didn't have anybody he could talk to mm-hmm. about how he was feeling. True. Yeah, he did. Okay. And and she stopped at the end of it, not to spoil it. Yeah. But when the show goes off, she says, this has been a waste of however many years <laughs> because you're not going to change. Yeah. You're not trying to change. Mm-hmm. You just need somebody to 
validate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so, again, it goes back to when you go, because the money is always in the treatment, not for the cure. Yeah. And a lot of that, too, they they, um, you know, they give medication to you to try to help. And that can be harmful to you either in the short or long term. You know what I'm saying? Because you may not need it. Yeah. But, but yep. But but I was gonna say like it, it being in the treatment and not the cure like, and, and you know this from playing sports because you played at, at not the highest but but the step below the highest level like that's where you was at like don't let it fool you like he was that guy high school I college was, like he was that dude I was doing good like up, and, and the only reason he didn't go further is because in the sport he was in take a lot of money to do that yeah. but you know Sponsors when you got injured right. You go to physical therapy. Mm -hmm. You go to a therapist. If yeah. that physical therapist is doing their job, are you supposed to be going to that person for the rest of your life? No, that's not the goal. They get you right. to a point to where right. now you are able to yep. function. Right. You're so, even so much so to where if it's nothing major, if you go through something similar, yep. you can self, you can fix it yourself. Right. Yep. Yeah. So now if I'm going to you because I got a problem with my brother or my girlfriend or my spouse or my parents. Mm -hmm. Two years from now, I shouldn't still be coming to you talking about my right. parents. Right. It should, and that's it should be my some growth. issue. Yeah. It should be, some, it should be some, or else it should be like, okay, well, I should only be coming to you a couple times a year just to say, hey, everything good. Check in, maintenance, kind of see what's going on. Yep. I agree. Like, it's. I'm not I'm not against it. Um I'm just just like with um with Rag saying over here. I believe that um it's it's levels to it. Like and it, it, it's some bad therapists out there, period. Like it's a you, lot of them. Yeah. And so you you may have to waste a lot of money trying to find one that's actually accredited and doing the stuff that they need to do. You and I saying? joke and call myself Dr. Rag or you see my Instagram <laughs> Dr. Stringer. Yeah. I have not gotten the paperwork, but I am actually in the vein of counseling. That is something that I the direction I'm moving in. And right now, you you know, you might as well get it while it's free. Like I do that for a living. Like, um, but and, and I guess that's why I feel the way I feel about it. Because yeah. my thing is if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be coming to me six months still dealing with the same thing. Right. You should be able to mature right and to say if you really want to change self, right if, if, if you really want some results i agree i agree i actually want to read this it's um you know i looked up some stuff talking about with the therapy it's called the two major obstacles that prevent black individuals from seeking therapy um it was a study and and one of them is uh the lack of cultural understanding uh it said many black individuals point to the lack of cultural understanding of black culture as the reason why they don't seek therapy. Given the historical and present day experiences of racial oppression and marginalization in the majority white country, plus institutions with mostly white providers, many people of color, in this case, black people are mistrustful of the psychotherapy field. In which I, I, I see that, you know what I'm saying? I can see how that could, you know what I'm saying? Kind of be, a thing because really most of the therapists when you're out there they're mostly white okay i got my uh Probably my great aunt the one the one who i was talking about mm -hmm. a couple of episodes ago her and her husband helped uh, organize the um the sanitation worker strike mm -hmm. that's what she has uh her doctorate in um she was actually the guidance counselor at um fairly for years mm -hmm. it's like a lot of old heads that we knew growing up at church uh Ms. Mm -hmm. Hop and D. Webster and all that. Like, she was their counselor when they was in school. Mm -hmm. Um, So she was somebody who, I, like, I had in my household yeah. that was 17, 15 Gaither. You know what I'm saying? South <laughs> right. Memphis, like, I could roll up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because my, my dad's sisters, like, she she lived in Virginia, so it was hard to talk to her and her husband. Um, but like I could roll up to my aunt's house, right? You know what I'm saying? Or that that's my my grandma's baby sister. Like yeah. I could talk to her. Um, but times that I would go and say, "Hey, you know, auntie, I really need to talk." 
for me, it was no different than when we just had a regular conversation. Yeah. And so what I learned and what I gathered from that is most people just need somebody that they feel comfortable talking to. And I think we had this conversation before, too. You know, we talk about a lot of life stuff and stuff. Like, the friendship that we have or the inner circle that we have is like, you can come to me, I can come to you, be like, look, uh, going through X, Y, Z, what's up? And like, at one point, I just made it need to get it off my chest. And then once I get it off my chest, then you may have a word or some wisdom or some advice. You know what I'm saying? And so I got it off my chest. And so that can be healing in itself. That's why I'm, I'm more... I encourage like friendship, like real friendship, like like not just having cheerleaders or people just that kind of you know coddle you in your in your ways or doing stuff like people that you can have frank conversations with and really can bounce some stuff off them. You know what I'm saying? Like to have that, and I think more men are have that than women because some women can be it can be more like hateful or not really want to. Uh, or, or the fear is things. that if I tell you this, you're going to use it against me. Right, right. Or you may um, think a certain way about her. She's a coward. She's weak. You know, or she may try to go get your man or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? It could be a lot of other conniving stuff. So, And, and I can say, man, look, like our relationship, because you know, <laughs> you're more <laughs> like you'll just say something and just be like, okay, I said it. I'm good. And then, like, it'd be sometimes I had to come back and be like, hold up, what you mean when you say that? <laughs> but our relationship is such right. that, you know, like, you can tell me you don't like something, and I'm not going to blow up and get defensive. Right. The first thing I'm going to do is, okay, I'm going to look at me for like, okay, well, why did he say that? Can I move differently? Maybe I'm doing, maybe I need to change how I'm moving. Because yeah. you know me, I'm always self-accountable. Yeah. So it ain't, oh, man, JB, nigga, you tripping. No, let me look at me first. Yeah. And so now after I look at me and see like, okay, well, I need to adjust this. I need to change. Then I say, okay, what was you saying? We said, and then sometimes after you say it, you realize like, okay, well now right. I said this, but this is really right. where I'm coming I, from. I, I kind of, just like we did the other day with the Marco Polo jump. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. I mean, or, or even like, you know, the times is like, man, you know, you said you're going to be here, right. <laughs> you know, at, at 830, man, it's 840. But then like, you didn't really understand. Like right. I had to break down. Like, okay, look, it take me this long yeah. to get home from work. Like yeah. I ain't ate nothing. I ain't changed. I use the bathroom. I need right. a shower. Right. And so 45 minutes, then I got to turn right back around, do all that and try to come yeah. back. Like, but then when you heard that, then it's like, okay, so uh-huh. he not just right. low BSing. Thing. Yeah, now that's low. You know, he ain't on the game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or on the on the gram tricking, trying to, you know, in people inboxes, like he yeah. really ripping and running. But we had so but when you communicate, yeah, we're not holding that stuff in. Yeah. So now you don't have no secret grudges with me because when you have an issue, you know you can bring it to me. Right. If I have something I'm thinking about, and the way we present it to it is different. Yeah. You know, and I and I That's know true. with you, you know, you got got people like uh my guy B Howard, yeah, hell Stewart when he was here, Stewart, uh Butler, you yeah. know what I'm saying, Pat uh, Mc, Boom Mc, McDay, yeah, uh, oh my boy McDay, good yeah. old McDay, yeah, uh, but like you know that that's more I I know y'all got that that bond, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and I know you you talk to me as well, and then you know That's like right. with me like Hawk, you know what I'm saying, uh Ty, yeah, Steph D, Thad, like these yeah. guys. And, and all of our relationships are different, yeah. but I had these relationships. And it, and these guys can call me and say, hey, you good? Right. You straight? You need to talk about something? Right. And, and if I just need to vent. Yeah. Like, like you remember when uh when Marco had died, mm-hmm. like, yep. I was in Miami. I'm, I'm on mm-hmm. vacation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But each of the dudes I was down there with, and, and they, they could tell I was messed up about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, so like, Hawk came and we and just, that. man, was walking through the mall down there in Miami. We was just talking. I was able to talk. Like, I remember the Airbnb was, we was at, like, me and uh, uh, Stefan was in the same, you know, like, spot and where, where our rooms was at. And, like, I was just, able, like, I'm talking. And he could tell, like, I was getting him up. But I was just able to be myself. Mm-hmm. So, now, by the time I got back to Memphis, I was good. Yeah. I did all my healing. Right. When I'm with my homeboys and my, cause in each one of them that was there, you know what I'm saying, from Hulk to 
uh, Ty to Stefan to uh, June to yeah. Joe. All these guys just, just hey, you good? You know, you need to talk, man. I can listen. I was able to get that out. Yeah. So now I ain't got to go see nobody because I have, like you said, I got those relationships. You got that built in. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But again, I'm not anti that. Right. But I feel like depending on the situation, right. that should be the last resort, not the first option. Right. Because I feel like it's disingenuous, and, and you mm-hmm. can better speak on this because you're married. Yeah. Your wife would feel some type of way if you're telling somebody else and you haven't first given her the option to, because she may be receptive to it. Right. But if you're just like, oh, I need to run here, because mm-hmm. you, you, you kind of do that person a disservice, and you know this from your job. You got supervisors, you got managers, then you got senior managers. Mm-hmm. Your, your direct supervisor would feel some type of way if you done went to the senior manager about a problem right. and they like I'm right here I'm right, right here right, right well, you, right buy, you skip protocol and right. I'm right here right. we can talk and, and I think the problem the stigmatism is that we don't talk enough amongst each other mm-hmm. and with ourselves uh, we are used to holding stuff in as a culture true avoiding drama it, we, what we call avoiding drama or just like you know, most in, in black households want to go there like, you know, people say, what happens in this house stays here. You know, this is our business. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to, you know, spread any rumors. Or whatever happens in this house, it stays there. You know what I'm saying? I knew I grew up around people of families that were more so, you know what I'm saying, like that. More so like, so going to a therapist has always been more like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I need it because... I grew up not kind of putting my business or something out there. But, well, I I knew you grew up around uh, some white folks and and other, you Mm -hmm. know, ethnicity as well, like in in the different neighborhoods that I lived in. You know, of course, me living in Maryland and Virginia and other places like that. But the white dudes I knew, like, they wasn't, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Hey, guess what? My dad was snoring cocaine yesterday. Guess what? Right. Man, man, my, my my mama came home and tried to cut my dad. Like they didn't talk about that stuff, so right. it wasn't just us. Yeah. Now, now it might have been said like that, yeah. But the different people that I knew, whether they were Indian, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, they wasn't talking about like I didn't. And so when something crazy would happen, be like, hey, I didn't even know, mm-hmm. cause but but it's this stigmatism that it only happens in our house. You know what I'm saying? Whereas I I will say it probably gets said like that. Yeah. But the way the way we grew up was my dad's thing was is like anytime y'all need to talk, all you gotta do is say, Dad, mom, we need to talk. Right. Now he said, the only time it ain't to talk, you didn't clean your room up or something, you didn't cut the grass and you getting roasted. I don't need to hear about your emotional problems right now. That's not the time to voice right. your emotional problem because you're getting roasted because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. Right. Now, because cause when you're in there watching TV, you don't need to talk about your emotional problems. Right. When you're playing the game, you don't need to talk about your emotional problems. When you're outside, you don't need to talk about So now when I'm getting on you for not doing what you're supposed to do, I don't need to hear about yeah. how you scarred, you got scarred for life back when you was four. <laughs> That's irrelevant at this particular second. Right. You're going to get this roasting. Right. But later on, if you need mm-hmm. to talk or whatever, and, and then and then it was times he would, you know, just come in, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or how was your day today? You need to talk about anything, you know, I'm here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what's on your mind? What you thinking about? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm like, man, we good. What you want to talk about? But, so I grew up in a household where that was encouraged. Right. I grew up in a family where if you was tripping, if people thought, like, forget an intervention, like my aunts, great aunts, and grandparents, and great grand, would pull jack you. Up, hey, what what's up? <laughs> right. What's up with that? Why are you acting like that? What's going on? Yeah. Talk to me. Mm-hmm. You, so I'm comfortable, not with everybody, but I'm comfortable if I have to say something, if I have to talk about something, if I don't like something. Mm-hmm. And, and so it really irks me. 
it, it's people who I'm not as close to if I feel like I can't be open and, and honest with you. Right. Or or like when I've been in relationships, if I if I can't tell you things that 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 annoy me or triggers for me or things that get on my nerves uh -huh. and you feel like I'm attacking you, that's gonna make me close up. Uh -huh. And so now now I'm looking for a way out of the relationship because I can't communicate with you. Yeah. And so I, I don't, again, I'm not anti-therapy. I just think that now, especially in this day and age and this culture that we live in, it, it's just like a drug. It's like a quick fix. Yeah. But again, if you're not thing. getting a solution, yeah, because you can talk about it with anybody. Mm -hmm. You can get a blog. You can get a podcast mm -hmm. and just start talking. Yeah. Or just like from my experience, you know, my dad passed in July and honestly, um, months and stuff after that, I, I thought about, you know, you know, maybe going to a therapist or something like that. But then some of my um, concerns and stuff, I voiced to you how I thought certain things wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. So I, I got it off my chest. And so, you know, People that don't have that infrastructure, the friends, the relationships, you know what I'm saying? I think therapy is a good short-term solution, you know what I'm saying? But the goal is to have people around you, whether that's mentors, mm -hmm. best friends, girlfriends, you know, your, your homies or whatever, to have the infrastructure around you to where, you know what I'm saying, y'all can bounce stuff off each other. Just like what the word said, you know, iron sharpens iron. You know what I'm saying? And so I think God, the way God sets it up, you know what I'm saying? We have it inside of us, but just like I think we, we had the example, just like, you know, God didn't want the his people to have kings, you know what I'm saying? But because of their hearts, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'll set this up for you so you can have this. Like, I think ther therapists and counselors are there, you know what I'm saying, for a particular reason, but the, the best options are to have relational you know what i'm saying those relationships those friendships to where you can actually you know bounce stuff off each other have those hard talks have those things and like i said but i think a lot of people are afraid of yeah. you know what i'm saying like having a falling out you know what i'm saying or, or having that uncomfortable awkward situation to where if i expose this to you you know what I'm saying? You may not like it. You may like, you know what I'm saying? How, how are we going to be for that? I just don't want to worry about that. So I just go to a, a therapist and talk about it. So I don't have to expose that to my inner circle or something. Well, when you, when you think about it, like you say counselor. Yeah. When you take the OR off, the word is to counsel or mm -hmm. to advise or to give advice. Yeah. Direction. Mm -hmm. Guidance. Mm -hmm. That's why in high school it's called a guidance, guidance counselor. counselor. Right. I am trying to direct you in an area that you're trying to go in so that you can be most effective and most successful. So if I'm going to a counselor and you're not advising me, if all I'm doing is talking and telling you how I'm feeling, you're not doing your job. Right. Even a therapist, <laughs> a physical, like you, when you go to physical therapy, you go to like the therapy, they have you doing something. Right. It, it ain't like. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm just sitting here and then, no, you got to get yourself out of this. Yeah. If you don't work, you're not ever going to overcome the situation. So, again, they're giving you things to do yeah. to overcome whatever it is you're dealing with. So, again, if I'm going to you and you're not giving me anything to do. Right. Because you can talk to, you know, a, a guy sitting on the corner with a sign that says, you know, hey, I ain't trying to eat no food. I really just want to buy a beer. You can talk to him. <laughs> right. And, and for the sake of getting it off your chest, it's off. So something to do, not necessarily like some medication. Because right. I think that's that's probably the right. first the mm -hmm. first thing that they'll probably right. uh, suggest to you to get some some type of medication to calm down, which that's a that's a short term solution. Right. But like even with me, I go back to the spiritual. I'm like you know what I'm saying? How are you spiritually? Because at the end of the day, like you said, do you want? Are you going to continue to go to therapy for the next five years? You know what I'm saying? Or are you going to take that as some training wheels? You know what I'm saying? And let the spiritual makeup take over. You know, kind of from that. You know, so for those that are believers, like if you're, you know, if you're not, like therapy may be a good solution. Like I, I heard, like uh, Charlemagne the God, he goes. 
to therapy on a regular. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a it's a for like the last ten years. Like he just has it set up and he does that. He said it helps him with that. But for people that are not in that tax bracket, you know what I'm saying? Like I mean, but and, but see, this is what I'm saying. If you still need to go because you're still feeling that same trauma, yeah, then. You're you're getting raped with no Vaseline. <laughs> Ice cube. Anally raped. Yeah. Um and, and I'm not making light of anybody who's gone through a situation yeah, like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, yeah. That, that's maybe it's a bad figure of speech, but it's a figure of speech. Yeah. It just means you're being taken advantage of. Yeah. And it's not pleasant. Um But if I'm still going and I'm still talking about the same trauma that I've had. Yeah. Yeah, where's the growth? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. So the, yeah. when you talk about all black people, look, yeah, I've been in the back of 13 police cars. <laughs> Every <laughs> single time I was innocent. Right. Okay. I don't still, I don't wake up in the middle of the night thinking about that. Yeah. Like, like when I walk into a mall, now I'm aware, but, but it's just like when I'm walking through the woods, I've never been attacked by a wolf or a bear, but I'm aware, I'm not just skipping carefree. Yeah. I'm aware that it might be a wolf or a bear or something. That I don't want to run up on me in the woods, so I'm my head's on a swivel. Yeah. In the same way, when I see a police officer, I'm, I'm looking. Hey, I don't want to be in the wrong. Just like when I go to certain neighborhoods, I've never gone to an unfamiliar neighborhood and been jumped. Yeah. But when I go to certain neighborhoods, like I'm still walking with my. It don't come from trauma. Yeah. It's called being cautious. It's called being careful. Mm-hmm. So everything is not necessarily about trauma. I don't have that trauma, even though I'm aware that that exists, but because I do know how to communicate. Right. And I ha- I have expressed past hurts and past fears, and I know how to process that and deal with that. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I feel like a lot of times people don't get. Because stuff going to happen. Yeah, It's just like, uh, you remember it's Forrest happen. Gump? You put the shirt on, the <laughs> shit happens. Right. That, that expression. Yeah. Okay. What you gonna do? Yeah. You gonna whine about it? Right. Cause like me, I'm just gonna wipe or jump in the shower. Like that's it ha- that's a part of life. What to say, trial. How you gonna deal with it? Trial's gonna come. Exactly. Gonna, gonna How happen. are you going to deal with it? Right. And that's the problem. We're not learning how to we're only learning how to cope. We're only learning how to survive. We're not learning how to thrive. Right. When you're thriving. Yeah. And like you point out, scripture says that we're more than conquerors. Uh To conquer means that you have a flawless victory. Mm -hmm. So if you're more than a conqueror, that means it's more than a flawless victory. Yeah. So that's what I'm on. Another level. I ain't trying to survive. Survive just means you made it. Right. I survived. Mm -hmm. I got through. No, I'm not trying to go through. I'm trying to be beyond flawless. Right. <clears throat> and so when you're thriving, that means I'm just I'm going from increase to increase. I'm going from glory to glory. glory, to glory. I'm going I'm going from one height to the next height. So I ain't trying to survive. I'm not trying to cope. Yeah. I'm trying to overcome. I'm trying to be victorious. And another thing with blacks, I think, and I don't want to get take the church off the hook because I think. Some people can go to counseling and they'll just, you know, the counselor may just tell them just just to pray. You know what I'm saying? Just to pray through it. Like there actually are practical things that you can right. actually do. Now, if you're if you're a man of God, a woman of God or whatever is not giving you practical things that you could do. You know what I'm saying? That that's 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 an issue. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of people um, actually had this thing. Let me read this. It's, uh, it says some blacks use their faith as therapy. About 50% more whites receive mental health care than blacks, um, according to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration survey. And one of the uh, therapists says that what I think is and, and was is a false sense of religious of religion that feels as if you go to someone that maybe you don't trust God or you really don't want nobody to know your business. Like, And I can see how people could you know, necessarily feel that way. It just really, it, it's a case by case basis. It really depends on who's your counselor. What are they? And, and like, and a lot of people, it may take a while for you to find a counselor or a therapist that fits you, that gives you 
you know, kind of what you need. But on the other hand, that could be a waste of money if you don't already have the infrastructure of your family or your friendships that can help you along the way. Let's make it real plain for the people. Let's do it. Okay, so let's say you're starving uh-huh. and you got all these restaurants. Uh-huh. They're saying, hey, no, you know what? You, you If you're hungry, you need to come to a restaurant. You need to come and spend your money and come to this restaurant so we can feed you so you can be full. So on your way to a restaurant, somebody say, hey, man, I, I cooked at the house. Hmm. You want to, you know, eat, eat here, you can. Right. For the free. I got you. So, you know what? Okay, bet. I mean, my money kind of fine. You know what? I can <laughs> save the Right. And then the people at the restaurant say, you know what? You have, that's a false food that you got there. Um, you, you really need to come to me if you're <laughs> trying to get full. Yeah. That's that's just a false sense of security. Who am I to say? And that goes for the other way. Because mm-hmm. somebody could say, hey, I got this food for free. And you might say, no, I want to go to the restaurant. And that person saying, you know, you, you shouldn't have spent that money. You know, you could have got that from me. <laughs> Who is that person to say? Yeah. So if you are in the clergy, if you are in the church, who are you to say if somebody does go to a therapist or a counselor and they get what they need, who are you to say that that person wasn't effective if it works? Yeah. To the flip side, to the point you was making, because I consider myself a man of, of the Christian faith, mm-hmm. and and again, that's the direction that I'm going in. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to be, I will be a, a counselor or a therapist who is a Christian, not necessarily a Christian or mm-hmm. counselor or therapist. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm not. My agenda is not to push my faith. My agenda is for whoever I'm counseling to get healing. Right. And if by chance, if you're curious about that and you want to go that route, then hey, I will, you know, do my best to point you in the right direction. But if not, I can give you because the scripture says things are first natural, then spiritual. Yep. So I can give you the practical. Mm-hmm. Without going into the deep spiritual, I can give you practical things, tangible things that you can see in front of your face, and I can also relate them to spiritual things. Mm-hmm. But that is very arrogant if I'm in the medical field, because it's just like one of the problems with the medical field. And I don't have any problem with medical science, mm-hmm. but it's just like in the medical field, if you go do some natural healing, it's really arrogant to say, oh, well, you know what? You didn't really get healed. The only way you can get healed is if you come to this hospital or this doctor. Right. But if your cancer's gone, yeah. or your heart disease gone, or your blood pressure's dropped, who are you to say? And yeah, I know you got those degrees, but the results are the results. Mm. So you're going to tell me, and that this is a medical thing. They tell you, and, and I knew this from when I went uh, to be a, uh, going for pharmacy. One of the things that first things they tell you is, is that you cannot tell a patient that they don't feel how they feel. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I say I got a headache and you're a doctor and you run me through the machine, give me a CAT scan, MRI, you can't tell and you say, I don't see nothing wrong. You can't say, well, because I don't see nothing, ain't nothing wrong with you. Mm-hmm. So, on the flip side, if I tell you, you know what, I feel great. And then you run the test and it's like, I don't see nothing. You can't say just because you got these PhDs and degrees that, well, because you didn't come to me or because you didn't do it this way, that's not legit. Uh The results are the results. Uh So if somebody's thriving, they're not toxic anymore. They're not in pain anymore. They're not hurting anymore. You can't say just because you're a counselor or a therapist that it's not legit just because they didn't come to you or somebody like you. On the flip, if you're a, a minister or pastor, an elder, you can't say just because they went to a therapist or a counselor, psychologist, oh, well, because you didn't, because I ain't lay hands on you, it ain't legit. The results are the results. Uh-huh. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it's about healing. Yep. I'm not anti, and going back to the original point I was making, I'm not anti that. Yeah. And, and I know I was re- I was going in on them, but my thing is, is I have seen, I have lost family members who were going to therapy but the thing was, is what do I need to do? Right. And you're asking me how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. I told you how I'm feeling. Right. I'm hurting. Mm-hmm. 
what do I need to do? Well, how do you feel about how you... No, I just told you that, like, and we're going through a circle. And this <laughs> right. money's being spent, and so I eventually just gave up on life. Yeah. And so I'm sensitive to that. And like I said, my, my Uncle Maurice, and I mean, still calling my Uncle Maurice, um, my, my aunt has been gone for 20 years now, mm. but we still call him Uncle Maurice. But he's still University of Virginia, tenure professor. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Still got that. My aunt, before she passed, had that. My my great aunt, my aunt Irma, the one that helped uh, organize the uh, march down here, got her PhD in that. Right. Like I, I come from a family of count, counselors and ministers and educators. Like that's in my DNA. Like that's what we did. Mm-hmm. My, before my dad got in the ministry, like that was what he was going to school for. But he was going to do from the from the sports side and and, and uh, the music side. He was going to do the sports side and the music side mm-hmm. because uh, my aunt did music therapy, which is like when somebody come in. You play certain music and it helps them mm-hmm. deal instead of taking medication. That's it good. helps them process yeah. that. That's dope. So, and again, so like, and I and I got all their psychology books and stuff like that. Yeah. And so I was gonna do that. Mm. And, and again, my thing was, I'm in there, and you want to argue with me? We're not talking about anything that have to do with psychoanalysis. You want to every class? You want to talk about my faith? Yeah. What they got to do with this? <laughs> Right. And you want to know why I believe, like, and not you don't want to know why I believe, you want to attack why I believe the way I believe. Yeah. So, I'm I'm, I'm passionate about it because, and, and we've I'm I'm not special. Everybody, and you know people that have experienced trauma. Yeah. But my thing is, is I know healing and deliverance and freedom, and I want everybody to experience that. Uh mm-hmm. huh. And and again, so I say if that's what you need, right? But like how we sitting here, you got a relationship with somebody. It's disingenuous for you to still go hang out with this person and kick with this person, but you can't talk to them, right? Why are you hanging out with them then? Mm-hmm. Why not just cut them off, right? I'm I'm not gonna be around people and spend hours and days and weeks and months and years around you, and I can't, right. Because I think we're saying the same thing because people that that you're around, that you call your inner circle, whether that's family or friends or whatever, you should be able to talk to them or go to them if you're going through something to actually help with the, you know, with the healing process to do that. So um, I think that should be probably, at least in my opinion, the first option that you go to, you know, have that. But also... Your, your man of God, whatever your local church you go to, those people should be there to point you in the right direction or give you some wisdom or advice. And most of those services, to my knowledge, are free, you know, for the most part, yeah. or they should be. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, now, if you go into a church and they charge you, you need to go to another church. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You yeah, can tell yeah, them that, Rag said it. Yeah, that, that, I got that, you. That, that ain't cool. But I think... Uh, I think that's good, man, because I think we're both saying the same thing. We're, I'm not against it because I've seen firsthand how good therapy can point you in different directions to where you may not have thought before, where, you know, go to the root of a situation to where now you can, you know, compartmentalize that and actually, you know, go about it and do something about those past relationships, those friendships or whatever the case may be. But then... As Rag was saying, you also could have, you know what I'm saying, some counselors and therapists that are not good, that are just, you know, jucking and jiving you and just sending you somewhere. Or the first thing that they may do is just uh, prescribe some medication for you to really subside whatever your condition is, but not really get to the root of it and really give you some wisdom or advice to kind of move forward. They just want to keep keep that check coming you know what i'm saying right. keep keep that okay come listen come next week come next week do this and do that but um i do think therapy is is helpful but i think the best thing is to have your inner circle your friends your man and woman of god to have in your life to really well, and you help know what, you win that you said this earlier though but you was talking about the the circle of friends and how important it was to have people who can really tell you about yourself. A lot of us is comfortable to go to a therapist or a counselor because 
most of the time they're not gonna tell you about yourself because they don't know you. Right, but but he, <laughs> but but he, but even because again, one of the things that is taught is is that you avoid yeah. situations like that. Right. Well, and I'm letting you know, like it, you know, yeah, they can they can try to take my license or whatever. Like <laughs> I'm not that dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if you full of it, don't come to me talking about your kids or your wife or whatever, and you wrong. I'm gonna tell you. Okay, first of all, wrong. you're wrong. But I think that's one of the things they they they're trained to not tell you that. Right, exactly. They're trained to not tell you that you're wrong. They'll go a roundabout way to be like, "Well, did you yeah. think about this?" You know, but right. at certain points of time, you need to know, dog, you ain't right. You know, you were wrong on that, and then go about however you want to articulate your way and how it needs to go. But in a lot of ther- therapy sessions, I think they're trained to not be combative or not tell you I, I, uh, I don't think you were right in this situation okay but love is confrontational yeah for sure and and, and all confrontation ain't bad it's, yep I agree I agree you know what I'm saying but like like again like you know people we, we're taught now that anytime you give resistance to anything or anyone that, that you're toxic or you're cancerous or right you know we need to cancel you because your yeah. love is if i if i care about you i'm gonna tell you like hey you messing up you're blowing it with your wife yeah you miss hey your kids man they looking at you man you blowing if i love you right. I go, so jb how do you think <laughs> that your son feels we and because that may not register right but if i tell you you're wrong that's gonna Catch your attention. Hold on. What you mean? I'm wrong. Right. By telling you, you've been acting like a jackass. And if we have a relationship, you'll at least hear me out. Yeah. Yeah. That's real. So, um, like I said, my man, my homie, like you know, you tell me, like, like I said earlier, you tell me, like, hey, uh, man, I don't like it when you do that. Like, you need to fix that. And we have those you know conversations. I think some people may look at this like the relationship me and Shay got, man. Like I'm one hundred with them, and, and vice versa. Like you know what I'm saying? If I if I need to voice something, I'll text it or I'll get on Polo. We we go, we do that, and th- and that's just the way it should be. I think that's the most healthy and God, you know, prov- provided way to handle a lot of our problems. Because I think God set things up for us to kind of work things out among ourselves you know what i'm saying but like you said he has put people in other positions and gifted people in the positions of therapists counselors or whatever that if you need that go you know go ahead and do what you do but i mean you know what the biblical way to if you have an issue yeah first thing you're supposed to do is go to that person yeah the, the person you have conflict issue with. Yep. And they say, and only if they don't receive you. Mm. Only if yep. you put it out there and they reject you. Say, so then you go get AJB, come Some, with me. I yep. need you to, yep. man, I'm, man, me and such and such, we have, man, you know, maybe they'll listen if. <laughs> right. What they call intervention. Right. And so now you bring up kind of a mediator. Yep. They still don't want to listen. Say, so then you go. To a higher authority. Mm-hmm. Then you go to somebody because you've done the process of, I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. But not only did I give you the benefit of the doubt, I brought somebody, a neutral party in, because maybe now you'll listen, because I care. But if that don't work, then you go to the... Mm-hmm. Now, again, if in a situation where somebody was molested or raped or drug, poison, somebody tried to kill you, in those situations, I'm not saying, yes, if you need to go talk to somebody, go do that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure. saying don't go do that, but I'm saying like a lot of times people say I need to go to therapy, I need to talk to somebody, when really you need to talk to the person who offended you. Mm-hmm. Or if if you're in, um, and again, you can speak, you're married, you need to talk to your spouse. Right. You for need sure. to tell your wife, like, hey, look, these are these are triggers for me. Yeah. And those can be uncomfortable you know what I'm saying? And, conversations. And, 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 it can't, and, like, and she needs to be comfortable enough to say to you, like, hey, mm-hmm. look, can we talk? Right. Like, okay, I know you haven't done this, but 
I grew up seeing this. Mm -hmm. And so when I see you move this way, mm. I don't know why I get scared. Like, but I get scared. I get intimidated. I think you might be doing. I think this might happen. Right. But they need to give you the benefit of the doubt too. Okay. And so now, if you reject them or shut them down, okay, then you're okay, yeah, go to a therapist. Right. But that's a disservice yeah. to you if you don't get the the benefit of the doubt to talk through it and work through. Okay, well, what can I do? Yeah. Cause, cause if you're a good listener, a good friend, you say, well, why? Well, when did you start feeling like that? Yeah. How long have you been feeling like that? Well, how did your mom? How did your dad respond to that? Yeah. You see, you see what I'm saying? Well, guess what? That's all they're doing. In therapy. Right. Yep. You see what I'm saying? That that's that's all that they're doing anyway. And so mm -hmm. and, and again, I'm not for it. Cause again, trust me, when I get mine, you can pay me if you want. Right. That's cool. But my thing is I don't want three, five, seven, ten years to pass and you're still coming to me mm -hmm. talking about the same exact thing that you was talking to me about on day one. I don't want if if I'm doing my job correctly. You've referred three or four to your friends, and when I see you now, it's just you good, man. Doc, I'm straight, and that's it. Yep. And, and if you are talking to me about this, something completely different, we ain't never talked about this subject before. Right. If if I'm doing my job, something totally different. Within a couple of years, Bro. you should be at a place of growth and 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 moving on, mm -hmm. and not still talking about what happened when you were three. You're right. Transformation. So that's that's what it's about, y'all. And uh, I think this was good to talk about. And uh, just with anything, I wanted to point out, like, me and Rag, we don't see ourselves as, you know, the pro or quote-unquote experts. But, I'm, an, I'm just you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we are, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we've lived enough, seen a lot of things. And, um, you know, we got some wisdom in certain areas that... Like Being I said, around the world and I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. So, you know, in those things, so I think, you know, I don't want to come off just like, oh, we're, you know, better than you or, or, or whatever. But if you're willing to listen, you know what I'm saying, cool. But um, so, yeah, man, until next time, continue with that executive mindset. And as always, keep it presidential. Yes, sir. Bow. Salute. Arriba Dirty.